Hello, everybody. Welcome to Take the Black Live, a show where myself, Dan Selke, Brunoscoming.net, and Cheryl Wassenaar of Cultures.com talk about all things Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire, fantasy, genre fiction. And today, obviously, it is all about the Game of Thrones Season 8 final trailer. Cheryl, get into it. Confetti. Woo, it's an extravagant, like, extravaganza, guys. And we yes. are extremely excited. Hello, everybody who's come here. Yes, hey, uh, Christian, Kathleen, Grady, Julie, Renee, Karen, Janet, Tina, Daniel, of course, Kenny Adamo, and everyone else. I know Kenny just kind of talk about this. So, okay, the whole episode is going to be about the trailer because, I mean, come on. It's, 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 it's worth talking about. We have two minutes of footage. Let's go. I just, yeah, so just to start it off, let's just watch it, and then we're going to talk all about it. So roll that tape. I know death. He's got many faces. I look forward to seeing this one. Everything you did brought you where you are now. Where you belong. Doesn't tire. Doesn't stop. Doesn't feel. I promise to fight for the living. I intend to keep that promise. It's good stuff, man. It is good stuff. Tell me something good. Okay. Okay. Let's get right into it. Let's start deconstructing this thing. Let's start getting into it. Let's okay. get funky. To me, this was Arya's trailer. Yes. I thought so. I thought she starts it off. The strongest image I have in this trailer is definitely Arya running scared because she, who, when, when did she do that? Never. She does not, she does not scare easily. And especially the fact that her face is bloodied that way. Oh, like, it's so brutal. That's, that's gnarly. I mean, yeah, they really, they, they've actually, she never looks like that. I can't, I. No. Even when she was like fighting the waif and doing her own little chase sequence there, she, she seemed pretty much in control. And yeah. you know what's great about it? They contrast it with her giving her little speech about like, I know death. He has many faces. I'm looking forward to meeting this one. Are you, are you, are you looking forward to it? I'm not sure you are. I think it's going to be really bad for you. It's going to bloody is, your face and make you look really, really scared. That is the face of someone who has made a bad decision. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, you just made a terrible mistake. She's made a terrible mistake. What a terrible night to have a curse. So on, so <laughs> forth. Just something too rough. It's great. No, that was great. I mean, and also, I, I love, so Arya, too, she also has this bit where she's, like, swinging a quarter staff around. Like, I know. Like to me, she kind of stole the show for this trailer. Yeah. Okay. Here's a question for you and everybody out there, for everybody. Okay. What has her so terrified? What is she running from? I've seen the theory propagated. I Ooh. believe this came from oh. Razor we, Harris. We get, uh, some, we get some theories in here. Oh, give me, give me those theories first, and then I will okay. tell my theory. Okay. Um, and there are several. Obviously, you know, White Walker, Whites. And if we can have that image up again really quick... Um, you can see there are some, you can see some people behind her. Yeah. Like the internet got on this. They lightened up the trailer. They excerpted it. They found everything. So people are chasing her. But you know, all you can handle two dudes. What's special about these? They're not alive anymore. <laughs> Definitely. That's new for her. She's like, like I, I'm imagining this scene is going to come after a long part of the episode where she's just been at the point where she looks like that. 
Like even Arya has a breaking point, or not a breaking point, but like a point where she's like, okay, this is this is pretty intense. Yes. Which is cool. Yeah, I mean, I think after seven seasons of basically Arya Stark is the most badass teenager mm -hmm. who exists in the entire world. I, I think it will be interesting to see this different side of her because this is a this is unbridled terror. This is not. Yeah. This is beyond just the waif is chasing me and I'm going to do some Assassin's Creed through the city of Bravos. This is, I'm going to die here if I do not keep moving. Oh, the stakes are going to be good. The stakes are good. And as we know, like, she could die there because it's Game she of Thrones could. and they can kill off a character if they want. And it's the final season, so even if this wasn't a show that had a history of killing off characters, the bets are off. It's their season, they'll kill if they want to. And they definitely will. Oh, I mean, people will. are going to die. Maybe yeah. Arya. Dwayne says, I think this is a bit much, but I have heard she could be running away from her mom and dad. Or Jim okay, because, get, so, so, so get this theory. What if it's not only she's running from whites, but like running from whites of people she knows? I've heard, That'd be gnarly. like some folks have suggested it's Gendry and Sam. I mean, they can't possibly know. It's like their vague, their general shape is kind of like that. Mm. That'd be cool. I've also heard that maybe, what if uh, the dead folk in the crypts are, ar are raised? That's some Resident Evil stuff. Lots oh, of that'd be gnarly. Have that'd, you heard that one? I haven't, but I'm into it. I know, that'd be, that'd be, that'd be pretty cool. That, that would be a slaughter then, because we know that like Varys and, and Gilly and Little Sam are all hiding in the, in the crypts, though. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we think we have that little shot too yeah i mean i tend to think that won't happen just because i don't know i mean let's say they do wake up aren't they like under stuff they're also magical zombies don't expect that to stop them i mean they're magical zombies but you know they have they still have limits um they can't like lift a car or in this case a very heavy statue they can lift a dragon what, what, no, they can like have a bunch of chains and drag a dragon out of a, a big lake. Which is still kind of lifting with, considering with, with water the power resistance, but okay. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, that's, that's a really cool theory. Yes. That it could be people who are chasing them. And he now says, Lady Stoneheart, LMAO. Of course, yes. Finally, Lady Stoneheart's going to come here. Catelyn will be raised and uh, chase her daughter down the hallway. Catelyn and Ned, raised up from the dead, chasing all you down. She'd be scared of that. Okay, that's, we've gone full Silent Hill. <laughs> I'm into it, but we've gone full Silent Hill. Kathleen Morris, I uh, doesn't think that was right. I don't really think that is either. Um, but I mean, who, who knows? She's definitely scared, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what the hell makes her that scared. I know, me too. Uh, did we have the shot of Varys in the crypts? Because I thought that was an interesting one, too. Because, um, you know, this. so there he is, Varys, and there's Gilly and Little Sam in the background, by the way, on kind of the left. Yeah, they are, hey. those two. So yeah, obviously, they, they all go hide in the crypts, the non-combatants. We should establish that we're, that we're looking at a lot of the trailer was the Battle of Winterfell. Is this going to be Correct. this huge, spectacular um, episode three night fight between the living and the dead, definitely. And they're going to pull a Helm's Deep. And uh, that's what I immediately thought of when I saw this. I thought of that bit from the Two Towers where they're fighting in Helm's Deep. And then you see like the women and children in the caves back there just kind of like hunkering down. Which, you know... Accurate. So, and, and they have said that they're going to have a lot of different genres kind of mixed in here. Mm -hmm. So That's I can exciting. see the Varys thread with Gilly and Sam where they're hiding and trying to uh, keep their spirits up or deal with that. Possibly deal with zombies that are arising in the crypts. That could be very bad. You know. Um, you know, the battle scene, obviously. We're going to have some horror with Arya, it looks like. We're going to have a bunch of different stuff. So I'm looking forward to that scene as well. And I, like... When you think of like great medieval style battle scenes the past 25 years, I don't know, but Helm's Deep seems to just be the one that comes up over and over. That's because Helm's Deep is basically the best. Yeah, pretty much. It is, it is better than uh, the Return of the King battle scenes. And I will, I will say that authoritatively. It is better. It's just, uh, it's so much more clean and beautiful and doesn't involve a ghost army coming in to save the day. Oh, right. I forgot about the ghost army. Yeah. And they've been talking up this is gonna, that this is going to be the longest battle sequence in the history of not just Game of Thrones, not just TV, but film, anything. So they're setting the bar pretty high, and I think that's the battle sequence they kind of have to get over. And I think they have a good chance of it. My, our bodies are not ready, guys. 
They're just not ready. Denise reminds us that George R. R. Martin said his wife told him she divorced him if he kills Arya. But, you know, he wouldn't be killing Arya. It'd be Div Vinegar and Dan Weiss killing Arya. So, that, I, I think he can get away on a technicality there. That Quite is a possibly. loophole. <laughs> that is an extremely good loophole. And Corinne thinks that Varys will die, and Melisandre said so last season, which she did. She did. And what better way to die than being choked to death by, um, I don't know, Tom Stark, a very <laughs> old Stark from the past. Lyanna. Lyanna rises from the grave, finally, to get her due. That's pretty cool. That could work. That could work. Speaking of Lyanna, yes. there's one uh, image I want to talk about. Just... Um, John and Daenerys, definitely in the crypts. John looking upset and kind of uh, troubled. He has pain. John has pain. And so, somebody pointed out that, I think it was David Harris, Razor over on Wick, that he kind of slowed it down. He thinks he's looking at Lyanna's statue. So I think right here, we're looking at John's found out his real parentage, found out that Lyanna's his mommy, which means that Daenerys is his aunt, which means that he's been doing some no-no stuff. And is looking at his mother's statue, being contemplative. What do you think? <laughs> no, no stuff. Um, he said no, no stuff. It was funny. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, I think that that could entirely be possible. Um, Jon Snow having a sad is not an uncommon <laughs> thing. Jon Snow being down, what? But this is like, this is deep. This is, this is true man pain. Before, he had only boy pain. This is man pain. And uh, the fact that Daenerys... Daenerys kind of has a weird look on her face, too. Like, kind of... Maybe not sure she should be doing this, but kind of doing it anyway. So I think this could, in fact, be the big reveal where we figure out if Daenerys and Jon will still continue getting it on despite knowing that they are related. I mean, again, we don't have context. If mm -mm. my theory is right, then I think Jon is looking very troubled and torn. Daenerys is like you know, there's a bright side to this, or like thinking along those lines. That, um, you know, Targaryens always did this, and it's fine for us too. Yeah. Yep, Maybe. that is in fact the bright side. <laughs> that is the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, or you can ride a dragon now. Because s somebody did ask, um, is John gonna ride a dragon? Uh, back over the comments. There are those shots where he's walking toward the dragons. Maybe, probably, yeah, I, I, I would think so. And we talked about it on, on uh, Take the Black Club a bit. We did. About how um, they haven't really gotten into the whole you need Targaryen blood to ride a dragon thing. I'm not sure you even do. But um, in the books, that's a thing. That Targaryen blood helps people ride dragons. And hey, if Jon has Targaryen blood, maybe Daenerys is like, you know what? Yes, we did some things we didn't think we were doing. But look at the bright side, man. We're young. We're pretty. Your mother... You know, died beautiful, clearly his statue. And um, we can ride dragons. What do, you, what do you say? That's like a top-tier Daenerys bad decision, and that's why I want it to happen. <laughs> I'm not sure it's a bad decision. Um, could be construed as a bad decision. Yeah, we, we've had all kinds of things. And yes. yes, Renee says, that's the sledgehammer can everyone made reference to. I probably agree. And Julie thinks they're both heartbroken. It's going to be weird, man. But I wanted to focus on that really quickly because of that. Yeah. Is there anything you want to bring up? Because I have a couple more things. But what, what, what stuck out to you? Okay, my big thing was kind of the use of sound and dialogue in this whole thing. Like, that was immediately what kind of stuck out to me is who speaks, what order do they speak. Daenerys doesn't speak. Cersei doesn't speak. But it's Arya Bran, Jaime, or John and Jamie, I believe, yeah. in Arya that Brand, order. Arya Bran, John and Jamie. In that order. And that's a very interesting kind of dichotomy, a, represent, a cross section, that's the word I'm looking for, a cross section of the remaining cast of the show. Mm -hmm. So you've got the assassin, okay. the tree wizard, yes. the secret Targaryen, mm -hmm. and the one Kingsley. good Lannister, no, the one of two good Lannisters, <laughs> Uh, and definitely the one with the better character arc, Fight Me. Um, like, it's a very interesting kind of mix. I mean, I don't know if it's that, that's necessarily, like, who are going to be the stars of this season with all of the kind of evocative shots that we got of Sansa, Cersei, and Daenerys. I got some good stuff. But there's something fascinating about the, the choices of who speaks when and who doesn't speak. Like... The absence is almost as intriguing as the presence in this case. I hear you. I mean, 
I I tend to think and just and just be kind of boring and bring the party down and just be like a, a just a, I think the trailers are kind of demanded by you know what you need. Like in season seven, you know we had Cersei give that whole like enemies in the East West thing. Remember that? That was great. Mm-hmm. We had Sansa give the great. Um, Pack survive speech. We had Davos give his skeleton on the Iron Throne speech. I don't think any of that like really said these are definitely the stars, even though they kind of were the stars of the trailers. Yeah. Um, I think they pick out things that are going to be uh, they're going to work in the moment. Although I don't know, like John telling us for the eighteen thousandth time that White Walkers are bad is <laughs> yeah. Super, super need to hear like it. that's not quite as necessary as Jamie. I liked Arya's speech. I thought it was Arya's pretty cool. Arya's speech is cool. Again, we already said like she's. She's looking forward to seeing the White Walkers, and she's in for, she's in for something. She's in for a gnarly surprise, guys. Christian says that the first shot of Cersei and Kyburn, she looks like she is enjoying some news Kyburn has given her, which she totally does. She has this super, super smug look on her face. I mean, my guess there is that um, Euron and the Golden Company have arrived. I think it's pretty early, because there's another shot of Cersei that I, I want to talk about, where her looking absolutely crushed and crestfallen. Um, drinking some wine, which she does, um, I think, in her bedroom there. There's like it, it's 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 really cool because they hold it for like five seconds. She, and again, just Lena Headey being an absolute beast of an actress, just kind of takes you on this like looks here, looks there, looks into her wine, looks up, and it's so it's compelling even in that little minute. It's a journey, and it is again completely absent of dialogue, mm-hmm. and just the, her face, her face like. Is so great. She goes through like 12 different emotions and I definitely counted and that's a precise number. No, it's not. Um, Like it is a whole big thing. And it's very interesting to me kind of visually, um, not the framing of the shot, but what what color is Cersei wearing? Taupe. Taupe, white. What color has Cersei usually been wearing in these past few seasons? Black. Always black. Yeah. um, She is, it's actually. uh, I think it's her jammies. Exactly. That's that's it's probably her jammies. Mm-hmm. But like the fact that we're seeing her kind of divested of a what's become her power color, b a mm-hmm. lot of the trappings that she likes to wear, especially on the strong shoulders. Yeah. And <laughs> Can you imagine that even her her like pajamas have like giant shoulder pads built in. I mean, look, if I were Cersei Lannister, I would sleep with shoulder pads. <laughs> okay, you've gotta you've gotta have that power feeling all the time. But we we are seeing her kind of stripped away and i'm using that word pretty deliberately uh, of what we have come to see as her armor so yeah totally you know not just we're not just being told that she's in a vulnerable place by her facial expressions although that's doing a lot of the lifting here we're being told it even if we're not processing it by what she's wearing in the moment in the costuming yeah in the costuming you know if, if we want to pull it up i know we're skipping around a little bit but um in, in this same week oh well okay I'll, let, me, let me try to organize this. Um, Lisa thinks she lost the baby while she's drinking and crying, which just in terms of the plot, I mean, she is drinking again. Yeah. Which you wouldn't think she would do if she had her baby. Okay. I just want to say something about this because I've heard this theory put out a lot. Like fetal alcohol syndrome, mm-hmm. as we know it, is a relatively recent discovery, guys. Oh, yeah. So... We're talking recent enough that Aldous Huxley basically predicted its existence in Brave New World. So the relationship, it's been understood in some way, but like it, it's, it wasn't like legitimately discovered until gotcha. much, much later. Than so you're saying think. that like don't, so don't when, count on Cersei to be responsible enough to know to stop drinking during a pregnancy. Yes, basically. Yeah. Don't I, count I on that. I can see that. Yeah. But, I mean, she got some bad news there. The other big suggestion is she was woken up in the middle of the night to say, oh, your brother's dead. Yeah. Like, Tyrion? No, the other one. No! Pretty much. <laughs> she, wouldn't be, she wouldn't care if it was Tyrion. If it's Jamie, she's done for. Yeah. Um, Especially if she'd lost the baby by that point, too. Yes. Like, imagine she loses the baby and the one family member she likes. Yes. I'm that. looking forward to the scene. I, I hope Lena Headey gets an Emmy this year. I, I'm sure they wrote her something really, really good. Give Lena Headey an Emmy. That is what my big wish. Well, here's a cool one. Kirsten suggests, ooh, maybe she killed you, Ron. They wed and she killed him when they tried to consummate. That is intense. Some Black Widow nonsense. I'm into it. Sure. Why not? Yeah. Um, As long as we're talking about Cersei, um, if you skip forward a little bit, Richard, I I had a picture of her in her costume on the Entertainment Weekly cover. 
And Jesse, we're talking about her costuming and just kind of the, the, mm -hmm. the vulnerability and the lack of shoulder pads and like of armor, different collar. She has this new costume, which is all about power. Oh, which yeah. It's all about covering, which is all about armor. I mean, Cersei's always kind of had like an armor theme going on in her outfits, but. Yes. She's basically like wearing plate. <laughs> She's like getting to that point. Yeah, like the studying in particular is quite evocative of it. Um, I really am intrigued by the the strip of like white, like the blue white, like right down here in her mm. chest. Um, I don't know if it means anything necessarily, but it does kind of suggest that something might be something might be going for her heart. It also kind of picks up the pattern in her shoulder pads too. But uh, yeah. Of course, the, the obvious is um, red and gold, those mm -hmm. two colors. I'm intrigued by like the kind of the flap that hangs down from her midsection, like kind of between her legs. It almost gives me like a, like a sumo wrestler thing almost. Reminds me of The Legend of Zelda actually. Oh yeah, I totally see that. <laughs> oh yeah, Link would totally get away with that. Uh, what, no, what, Princess what, Zelda. What, like an armored thing? Princess Zelda's... Oh, well, that would be the fire too. thing. You go into the fire temple and you have to wear that or you get burned. Um, <sighs> it looks great. And it's, it's very much about her being armored and looking fantastic. And then, yeah, the contrast with that vulnerable moment. We're going to go on a... I hope we're going to go on a big emotional journey with Cersei and have her kind of scale the heights and bump against the bottom and then die spectacularly. Oh, it's going to be great. Again, it's my hope. Lita so yeah, CD, Emmy, loving 2K, that already. Lo loving 2K everything 20? Cersei is giving me. Oh, Julie Davis says she's bent the knee, hence the red, bending it to Daenerys, perhaps. Ooh, Whatever. that is an interesting concept. <laughs> Though I do note she's wearing her Lannister pendant again. So. Oh yeah. She is. She, she's got a bit of both there. Could go either way. Okay, let's. Uh, and Renee asked the knee to whom? I'm not really sure. Um, who do you mean, Julie? To whom would Cersei bend the knee? Mm -hmm. The Night King? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> that escalated quickly. Does he want fealty? I have no idea. I think he wants to kill you. Uh, yeah. Um, a, the Night King, by the way, yes. it was pointed out, utterly absent from the trailer, but also, like, kind of there all the time. But, yeah, we don't need to see him. We know what he looks like. Yeah, why bother? If this is going to be looming. a more horror-focused season, don't show the monster too much. Yeah, mm -hmm. you got to keep him in the background and just let a... Let Arya's terror speak for itself. Maisie Williams can act. It's fine, guys. <laughs> it's perfectly fine. <laughs> um, you want to talk about, too, uh, Sansa's reaction to when she sees the dragons fly over, which is a great shot already, it's, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. I mean, like, I a dragon Sansa fly over, though. Sansa turns around, and it's like, what the fuck? Um, it was great. And we have a shot of that, and just um, yeah, her looking up, and there's one already passed. Um, what strikes you about this, Cheryl? It's, again, very different from the dragon reactions we've already had. Um, True. Sansa is, uh, she's not excited like her sister, but no. she's not terrifying <laughs> ducking for cover. She's not. That's a good point. She's not hitting the deck. No. She's, there is kind of a look on her face that is like, oh, God. You know, that it's, it's <laughs> almost like a, not necessarily resignation, but this kind of very subdued acceptance of what's going on. Um, I kind of link it to her line where she's like, Winterfell is yours, your grace, where she sounds kind of like, well, I guess I have to say this. Uh, and yeah, like there's some, there is some awe and wonder to her expression a little bit. Like she would have to be, you know, there almost has to be, it's freaking dragons. <laughs> but there, there is kind of this reservation to it as opposed to Arya's unbridled excitement. Arya's, like, smile tugging at the edge of her oh, yeah. thing. All right. Is there anything else about the trailer that stood out to you? Um, oh. I, I watched it. One and... Mr. Um, Blacksmith. Oh, yeah, Gendry. Oh, uh, yeah. What's up, Gendry? He looks hey. good. I'm, look, he's, like, my favorite... Tertiary? Tertiary character. And I enjoy the fact that they just realized Joe Dempsey is a very nice looking man and just kind of... <laughs> They've always known that. I know, but like now they're just leaning into it. Like the <laughs> costuming sure. where it's like just there's this exposed collarbone, a little bit of peck. Like it's top tier. Sure. It is completely top tier. Look, Kit Harrington is too pretty. Joe Dempsey is the contrast we need <laughs> in these trying times. I met him at a Con of Thrones. He's shorter than you would think. That's okay. <laughs> sure, it's fine. <laughs> so is Ken Harrington, so. Oh, yeah, he's like four feet tall. I know. 
So it's fine. I've never seen him though. It's fine. Camera adds a foot. How about you guys? What else? Did, what else struck out to you? Yes, please tell us. What should we talk about for the next like five minutes? Before we switch over to switch over to Asana and Josh. Yes. And yes, he was very nice at uh, Kind of Thrones, Kenny Adamo. I also met Kenny Adamo at Kind of Thrones. Hey. And I'll be back. I can't wait for this one. The next one should be very very interesting. Um, there's one theory here from uh, we saw the Golden Company. Let's go. We did. That's interesting. I mean. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be interesting, like how they work them in. Like it, it, it's, I have this concern, like how, like how much room is there for new players, you know, in like six episodes of of television, probably longer than usual episodes, but still. Yeah, I don't know how much you really need to sketch Harry Strickland out as a character, though. Sure. Or like, how, how about the Golden Company, like as an institution, because I I know that they don't really, they're not gonna go into it like George R. R. Martin goes into it because no one does anything like that. But I mean, like, they have a whole history. Um, there are the exiled, uh, kind of Targaryen exiles, really, who were chased over the Narrow Sea after they rebelled against the Iron Throne. They were like Targaryen bastards led by a Targaryen bastard. And it kind of, there's some make sense that they could come back and maybe defect and join Daenerys' side because they do have a Targaryen connection. Blood calls to blood. Blood, um, blood calls to blood. I, it, I think unless it's really necessary to the plot we might not get a ton of exposition we've kind of we've had them name dropped before so we have an understanding of who they, they are have, they, yeah they have been talked about for a while it's yeah like seasons back so i don't think we need like a huge amount of exposition unless it becomes important to the plot okay. that we have this exposition what is the snap tell me and julie wants to talk about quickly jamie and brienne I'm so excited to see Jamie Lannister too. He is. He looked good. He's um, one of my favorite characters. Richard, if if you still have the the image from Take the Black Club, there was a silhouette um, that we could use because there was a question about whether like who it was, whether it's it's definitely Jamie or Brienne. Yeah. And there's been like a raging debate as to that's their that's their left hand, right? I don't know. They could have mirrored the shot. If they're facing it, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure if that's Jamie or Brienne, but whoever it is, they're, they're definitely holding Oathkeeper. And then there's another HBO thing. They tweeted out something where it's like, and they just quote Jamie's line from the trailer and they include this gif. Yes. So I thought it was Brienne at first. And then I'm like, well, you just tweeted out this gif HBO. You, you must know who it is, right? Yeah. So it's Jamie. And then the Jamie, you see him right afterwards. I don't know. They're going to be in it. Yeah. <laughs> they're going to be in it. They're going to be doing stuff. Yeah. It's, it's it's cool and exciting. It it does like okay in the comments now people are saying it's Brienne. It does look like Brienne. It does like you can't have that hair thing. Yeah. But I mean, you said her hair didn't move as much. And again, again, HBO tweeted out Jamie's line she, with this image. It, it, she has longer hair than Jamie does, but she usually wears it so kind of slick yeah. back and tight um, that I don't know if it's her necessarily. Um, but after like a long battle, but, you yeah. know, when sweat gets in the hair, yeah. who's to so say it's like, where it's going to no, go? Uh, it could be. Uh, whoever it is, they're having a real bad time? Question yeah. mark? And as for Jamie and Brienne in general, I think Jamie's line when he says like, I made a promise to fight for the living. I had to keep that promise. Like, I think that's him trying to argue his way onto Team John and Danny. I know. Because, you know, they're going to be like, oh, you're the guy who killed my father. I'm Danny. And pushed my brother out a window. I'm John. And he's like, yeah, but I want to fight for the living now. I think Brandon will be very key in um, swaying people to get him to join up. So I'm pretty sure he'll join up. Oh, yeah. The only question is, um, will both of them survive that big old battle? Questionable. Very yeah. questionable. I hope. I don't know. I like them both to make it, but they are two people I, I do want to both make it. I don't think they will. Yeah. Um, at least to the end of the season. Yeah. It's <laughs> not looking good for Jamie, especially guys, but that's all I'm going to say because we have talked about that before. We have, haven't we? So, yes, we have on this very show. Uh, I think it was me and Josh at the time, but yes. Oh, fun. We have talked about it. It was also a great bit, kind of towards the end, where um, Brienne and Pod are kind of out in front of the army, and they're like on the front lines. They're going to be the first to face him down. Of course they are. And she's like, 
standing so stoutly. Yeah, it's Brienne's, like, oh, Brienne's Brienne. totally going to go out there. and she, she, she wants to be the first in line to face these guys. And Pod's like, I'll do it because I'll follow you. But I, I kind of She's going to mess some shit up. Okay. Anything else? That's fine. It's the internet, yeah. man. Um, <laughs> anything else that you guys want to talk about? Any other theories you have that we should address or ideas or images that just like smacked you in the face with their awesomeitude? A few will die. Most certainly, Christian. No oh, yes. question about that. It's going to be intense. Um, Gold Company might be there. Can't tell. Okay. Is there anything else you want to talk about? No, I'm, I'm good. In I'm that case. excited. Oh, Julie Davies. The kiss between Masande and Grey Worm really quick. Oh, yeah. Grey Worm has a lot of screen time in this one. Big romance. He got a poster and everything. He did. I was kind of I mean, He's I'm, moving on up. Good, good for you, Grey Worm. There's that shot of him like putting his helmet on. And it's just kind of an intense, like, he's the center of it. And then he gets a, a smooch moment with Masande. He's going nice. to die. He's going to die. Yeah. You don't get a smooch like that unless you're dying. That's another one. It's so hard not to telegraph things. Yeah. He's come quite a long way. I mean, he, he's, he's like a, a quiet little character arc. It, it, yeah, it is really kind of interesting to watch him go. But, yeah, that big kiss scene. He dead, guys. I'm sorry. Passion. I agree, Julie. Passion. That's yes. what it is. Passion. And yeah, absences. No brawn. Nope. Um, still looking for his castle. No, still looking for his castle. I'm not sure where he is. I mean, would he go and fight the undead for the for the hope of a castle? No Greyjoys at all. Um, yeah, none of them. Maybe Euron, like a far, far distant wide shot. Yeah, maybe. Big hint of Euron because of the ships. Uh, yeah. So they were both absent. That's a little curious to me. Mm-hmm. Very little Tyrion. The hound Tyrion. showed up like, yeah, one shot of Tyrion. Very Only little one. Tyrion. One shot of the hound. But, you know, you can't fit in everybody. No. It's, it's, it's a, there's a lot of freaking characters on the show. Yeah, especially when Arya is completely owning the rest of the trailer. <laughs> exactly. But. Okay. Will Arya mark the hound off her list? Asked Justin. I, oh, or. Oh. Which really helps him win Clegane Bowl, so, so, so she can kill him afterwards. Um, that would be that would be some dirty pool, and that's why I think Arya would do it. <laughs> Mr. Williams said that Arya's gonna like struggle between she's she's kind of returning to normalcy, like you know she has her family around, she's at home, like a struggle between that and, but I still have this unfinished business. So I think that that'll be interesting for yeah. for her, like um, negotiating, trying to be a normal person again versus. I have a list, and it's it's. I need to check it off. I just need to. It's impulsive at this point. I'm sorry. Gotta gotta scratch it off. Gotta scratch okay. it off. Okay. And yes, and hearing picture in the warmer climate. Oh yeah, totally. That that last bit. It might be at the dragon pit. That's all we can say about that. We don't want to get into huge spoilers. I think it might be. I think it might be him at the dragon pit. Um, and yeah, there's more to talk about, but we gotta move on at some point. We do. So do you have any other points you want to make before we go to the song then and Josh Cheryl? No, other than I am extremely hype and I'm excited to keep hearing your guys' theories. So keep uh, yes. keep telling us. We don't have to stop this. We can talk about this more next week. Yep. We can talk about it on Winners Coming, certainly, on at a Wick Club. Culturist There's a lot to go over. Is, We're hitting it from like a Julian Angles. Culturist.com. Yep, deep diving. Deep diving. So Okay. Cheryl, right. thank you. Yes. Lem before we win Josh Hill. Enjoy, enjoy these coming attractions. Have a good week, everybody. <laughs> oh, Ned Stark, will you ever learn? No, oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. I'm Dan Selke, the editor at WinnerIsComing.net, your one-stop shop for all things Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire, and genre fiction in general. We here at Wick love bringing you news, reviews, and editorial content, and we're going to keep doing all that stuff. However, for the especially hardcore among you, we're going to start offering even more. Welcome to the Wick Club. The Wick Club is a Patreon-funded effort to provide fantasy and sci-fi fans with even more Wick content. You can join at several levels. For $1 a month, you can enter into monthly swag giveaways and get to read extra columns. At $4, you'll get to watch extra episodes of Take the Black Live, our weekly chat show, with topics chosen by you. Please be gentle. And at the Valyrian Steel level, that's $10 a month, you get Wick Club t-shirts and access to a new segment we're calling Drinking and Knowing Things, a monthly live stream where I drink wine and talk with all of you in a free-flowing conversation about Game of Thrones, fantasy, sci-fi, and whatever else comes up after I've had a few. Just to be clear, we're not going to stop doing anything on WIC we already do, and we're hoping to add more stuff anyway. The WIC Club is a way to produce even more content, and hopefully to get to know some of you better. 
You can find links to more information below. We hope to see you in the WIC Clubhouse. Valor Morgulis, bottoms up, and thanks for watching. Welcome back. I am here with fansided.com luminary, gentleman and genius, Josh Hill. That's right. Hello, everybody. Says hello. Everybody <laughs> says hello to Josh. Uh, Julie says hello, Josh, and then four hand waves. Ooh, hello. Four, three, two times two. Yeah. Okay, we are here to do a song of Dan and Josh. I mean, frankly, this week, I, I kind of I kind of want to keep talking about the trailer, but we're going to do this anyway. Yeah. Um, where Josh Hill and I read through every chapter of, a, of George R. R. Martin's Song of Ice and Fire and just break down the chapters, what makes them work, what makes them interesting, what makes them special. And today we read Tyrion II Tyrion from A Clash Dos. of Kings, the second book in the saga. Josh, what jumped out and smacked you in the face about this chapter? Um, a dead baby. <laughs> a dead baby. Down. Dead babies are never a good place to go. Um, but no, just, yeah, that, it's, a, it's a potent image to start with. It a is. A dead infant. The dead baby. Uh, Tyrion stepping up and kind of being, also, I mean, on the one hand, looking out for his family name and looking mm -hmm. out for the throne, but on the other hand, kind of showing us good guy Tyrion. He is. This is definitely good guy Tyrion. I mean, this is, <laughs> this is, so, 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 so the chapter is Tyrion just having dinner with Janos Slint. Janos Slint. Leader of the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. Not Night's Watch. Lord Commander the, of the, the City gold, Watch. The City Watch. The yeah. Gold Cloaks. The Gold yes. Cloaks from the last book. From the last book, yeah. Kind of like, you know, the, poli the King's Landing Police Force. Yeah. He's, or the he's, Gestapo, he's, yeah. in this case. <laughs> the, 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 the secret police. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, Tyrion is doing a good thing here. Yano Slint is somebody who betrayed Ned Stark in the yep. last book. He was in Littlefinger's pocket. Mm -hmm. he, he killed Ned Stark's men, helped put him in jail. And then we learned that at the behest of Cersei Lannister, he and his men went out and killed all of Robert's bastard, which included a tiny baby. Mm -hmm. But not so, Gendry. Not they couldn't find Gendry. No, I mean, they're, they're 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 trying. They're trying. That's what, do you remember? They're the they're after the chapter. Guy. Yeah, yeah. Or Arya remember. chapter. Yeah, I don't got to mind you these things. <laughs> You're on it. Um, and so yeah, so Tyrion sending a slimy jerk like Yanos to the wall and making sure that Oliver Dean, the guy who actually killed the baby, meets with an unfortunate accident on the way. Tyrion is getting rid of corrupt people and killing baby killers. He is, and. He's being a good guy. He's being a good guy. And I, I, I'm hard-pressed to believe it's not because he is genuinely, deep down, a good, sympathetic character. Like, yeah, on the one hand, he's doing all this because he's got to look... He's cleaning, draining the swamp, for mm -hmm. lack of a better term. That's exactly what he's doing. But he's also doing it because Ned wasn't a bad guy. Like, he's got a relationship-ish with the Starks. Like, he doesn't dislike the Starks as much as the other Lannisters do. No. And the fact... And, but it's also the fact that there was a I mean, betrayal that happened. I mean, one did kidnap him. That's true, but also she let mail. him go. She did. I mean, after he finagled his way out of it. That's true, but it wasn't like a, you know, a Theon situation where it's... He seems to like Sansa, like yeah. he offered her some things to her. No, but he, he definitely has a soft spot for the Starks. Sure. And so I don't think it sits well that Ned was betrayed the way that he was, both because he doesn't want to get betrayed that way, because exactly. that's the like last hand of the king. Yeah, he's in the hand of the king. And he's like, got to clean out the cobwebs there and make sure that doesn't happen to him. But on the other hand, it's also, you know... Just to have something like that happen to Ned, who is like one of the good ones, who is out there kind of fighting the good fight, that's not something I don't think Tyrion stands for. I think you're right. I mean, th uh, by the way, really quick, Julie says that we're going to have to speed read the books to get through the rest before the show starts. Yeah, we're not doing that. No. Uh, we're going to keep doing this for as long as we can keep it up. Reading is cool, kids. Maybe it'll be the entire series. Maybe it'll be next chapter and we're finished. Probably not that, though. Or everybody that's upset that Game of Thrones is ending and has nothing to watch can read along yeah. with us, and we're just going to carry Enjoy that Enjoy the mantle. magic of words. <coughs> right? The magic of words. I mean, you are, you're completely right that Tyrion... I mean, it, it's, he has some altruistic motives here. He's, yeah. I think he is acting, A, yes, to get these scum out of their positions of power. But you're right. There's definitely the self-preservative thing, too. I mean, he doesn't want them to betray him, mm -hmm. and he wants control. Like, Tyrion is following Tyron's directive. Go to King's Landing, bring Varys and Littlefinger and Pycelle and Joffrey to heal. Don't mm -hmm. let them do anything stupid or stupider, more stupid things. So he's looking at Yano Slint and being like, this is a useless man who will not be loyal to me. <laughs> he, he's, he's draining the swamp. He's draining the swamp, He's yeah. getting people who are not loyal to him and installing his own people. Mm -hmm. This new guy, uh, Jaslyn Bywater, who is not in the show. Do you recall what happens in the show with this stuff? No, I don't remember. Because I was trying to recall who 
Jaslyn Bywater was. He's, he's not on the show. Well, there we go. Dead uh, end. On the show. I mean, the, 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 this this happens on the show. Mm -hmm. um, he has dinner with Yano Slint, and he has Yano like taken in dead of night and just put on a boat and just <laughs> shipped off. Oops. Which is great because yeah. he doesn't want to give him time to like go <laughs> running to Littlefinger or Cersei and complain. Yeah. And he gets some sopping drunk, which is great. Another good strategy, so he can't think his way out of it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but in the show, instead of bringing on Jocelyn Bywater, who is just like a rule follower, you know, doesn't like, he puts Bronn in charge. Mm, Bronn. Why would they uh, switch that for the for the show? Do you think? Because Bronn's awesome. <laughs> yeah, pretty <laughs> much. Bronn's, Bronn's a awesome. badass, and I'd much rather see Bronn than Jocelyn Bywater. <laughs> you don't know that. Which well, was, it, it, the great. consolidation of characters. What if they gotten Jeremy Irons played Jocelyn Bywater? Well, then we're talking a different ball game here. <laughs> <laughs> different, different, different scenario here. But it's the consolidation of the characters. Like, there's yeah, so exactly. much here in the books. Like, we have to, at some point, you know, cut some things out. Yeah. Which is clear it's, from it's us just... being this far into the second book and everything we read in the first book. There's plenty of stuff that they cut out. I mean, and we're still at a point where it's pretty faithful. Like, this mm -hmm. scene is pr it's pretty much in the show, mm -hmm. pretty much exactly as it is here. But you're trimming the fat. Like, there's yeah. no need for, you, if you have an existing character like Braun, you can just insert where this character, where Bywater was. And... I mean, I think Martin would say something like it wouldn't make sense because... Braun is a, a lowborn scum, and well, this you is need also somebody a little higher too. up. What's that? This is also his baby, so if they yeah, change anything. Would. Like, he, he, he does have more attention to detail like that. Like, this, yeah. you know, in this series, rank is so important, and birth is so important, yada, yada, yada. But, I mean, when it comes to TV, it's just, yeah, but we have this great actor and a good character. <laughs> just let him do stuff. And uh, they have the great line at the end of speaking of Braun, where Tyrion's like, if I ask you to kill a baby, would you do it without question? He's like, without question? No. I'd ask how much. <laughs> Zing. Which is also in the show. Yeah. Because why would you change? That's a great line. <laughs> it's a brawn line, too. It's a totally it's such a brawn line. line. Absolutely is. Um, other changes. There are quite a few changes, like small changes. Mm -hmm. I, we're starting to see, like, the ripples start to happen. Yeah. Like, for example, in the books, they find uh, Tyrion kind of get out from Varys. Cersei is the one who ordered all the kids killed. Mm -hmm. On the show, they switched that to Joffrey ordered all the kids killed. Why do they do that? Well, Joffrey's sinister. It's He's more sinister, but why to... do you change it? It's already here for you. Yeah, but... You, that, this way, you're making Joffrey even more evil than he already was. And again, the consolidation of characters, just why not? Joffrey's already a piece of crap. I mean, he's, he's already a piece of crap, him. but in this case, they're, 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 they're like, really isn't consolidation because they both have both people here. Yeah. They chose to make give Cersei even, less responsibility yeah. and give Joffrey more, which I'm not sure, cause I'm not sure Joffrey really knows that, he's a, that there are bastards out there. No. But it also sets up Joffrey's death to be even more shocking than it is because you're clearly building him up as this character who has a ton of responsibility and then he's gone. Okay. Little... Counterpoint, they're cowards. <laughs> I think they didn't want to make Cersei seem too unlikable because she was technically... Uh... She, she's going to be around for a long time and kind of be a sort of protagonist-ish. There's that. that. That's my opinion. I think they transferred to Joffrey because everybody already hates Joffrey. He's just going to keep doing horrible things. So yeah. just give him the baby killing responsibility rather than Cersei, who does it in the books. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I also like the slow burn of Cersei dancing in between being super, super evil mm -hmm. and maybe being a sympathetic character. And I mean, character. she gets there anyway. She does, but if you come right out of the gate, if you're coming off, you know, off the top rope with this, with dead babies, with, <laughs> that's pretty hard to come back from. And she does plenty of stuff that's hard to come back from as we go yeah. on in the show. So it's really like, well, let's cut this out. We don't ne necessarily need that on top of everything, literally blowing up Fair enough. people. I think it was cowardice, is my opinion. But, you know, what, what do you think? Why would they give the responsibility to somebody else? <laughs> Tyrion's Targaryen. Oh, Dwayne thinks Tyrion is Targaryen. I disagree, Dwayne. But you think what you think. You do you. Um, <laughs> one other small change really quickly. Shay. Um, you know, in the show, Tyrion gets Shay a job as Sansa's mm -hmm. maid. Yep. And here he gets her a, a mansion on the edge of town. Why that change? I have no idea about that change. I think it's against consolidation. It's that is like, against consolidation. Why? Although in the show, you're keeping her around. In the book, you're... Well, no, I mean, she's the same. Yeah, but... She, she makes the same fate. It's the same thing. That's true, but in one, in one circumstance, you're literally pushing her to the outskirts, and the other one, you're keeping her within the central. Yeah, I think that's it. The, the, where you can go back a little bit easier. You don't have to dance Just, around. Oh, yes, she came all the way back in. And, like, you go through the like, we only have so many sets. Come on, people. There's also that. But then you have CGI. Come and on. also, then you can, like, have Shay and Sansa interact, which you couldn't have. And, <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's true. If you had her living out where. So I, I, th I think it's more consolidation. Let's talk about Varys for a second. Yes. So at the end of this chapter, Varys comes in. 
and um, kind of follows up with Tyrion, just uh, congratulates him, really, mm -hmm. on getting rid of Yano so smoothly. And um, you get the idea they're kind of starting to like each other here. That Varys compliments Tyrion. He's like, oh, that, that was some good maneuvering there. Mm -hmm. He completes that uh, riddle from, a, from, I think, the last Tyrion chapter that we jumped ahead and did anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read it anyway. <laughs> it's, I mean... This is one of Varys' best lines. This is who Varys is. This I do is, love story time with Selkie. This is perhaps the heart of uh, maybe the books in some way, where, Tyrion, <laughs> where Varys talks about power. Power resides where men believe it resides. No more and no less. Power is a shadow on the wall, yet shadows can kill. And oft times a very small man can cast a very large shadow. Referring, of course, to Tyrion being a tiny, tiny person. Mm -hmm. But you know what? He plays his cards right, and he stacks the deck with people who are loyal to him. Yeah. He'd win a lot of influence. I like it. So that's Varys kind of look into how Varys plays the game. Mm -hmm. Where it's, 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 it's not about necessarily, I don't know, being the guy who can cut off a head or having, even having a lot of money or, or even being like a king. You just got to know how to use what you got and you can get a lot out of it. Yeah. Which is also a definition of Tyrion. Like, it well, yeah, describes totally. Tyrion to a T. Varys, it describes him. Little like, Finger, perhaps. Little Finger it describes everything. Like you said, it's the essence of so many characters in the book. The play. And then uh, Tyrion says, Lord Varys, I'm growing strangely fond of you. I may have killed you yet, but I think I'll feel sad about it. So again, good. bonding. Good <laughs> this is very much, the, this much the, 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 these two bonding. I also like that Varys um, is like kind of doing the um, kind of like... Soviet era spy match thing, like telling Tyrion all the stuff he knows, mm -hmm. like, oh, there's one guy in a ship who's going to go de defect to Stannis, and Tyrion's mm -hmm. like, okay, hang him. <laughs> Make an example. We can't have any defectors. He even says, like, th there was a dinner party, and one lord made a joke about Joffrey. Should I do anything? Tyrion's like, no, it was just a joke. <laughs> don't don't do anything. But I mean. Again, like, th that kind of thing happens in history. Like, and Stalin would yeah. have people killed if he heard they were joking about him at dinner. Yeah. Do you happen to see The Death of Stalin in that movie? I did. It's great. It was good, right? It's so good. Where they all have to, like, just <laughs> tightly comport what they say oh, yeah. and do exactly, or else they'll step on a line even a little bit. Steve Buscemi's great. <laughs> yeah, he was excellent. I, I, would, I would have never pictured him <laughs> as that character, but he was good. And, yeah, but... That's what we have here. That's yeah. what we have. Yeah, a, the King's Landing Kremlin is what we have. Pretty much. And yeah. Varys as, again, like Varys as this figure who is both kind of endearing and likable in a way. Yeah. But I mean, he's, he says something to somebody and that person dies. Like he, he wields a weirdly <laughs> large amount of power. He does. Okay. Uh, what, what else did I have to you about this chapter? It's a good chapter. I think it was, um, somebody said one of their favorites might have been Dan Turton. One of my favorite chapters they converted well into the show amazing writing. It did. I mean, we really got more into the essence of Tyrion. We got this relationship, this budding friendship, this weird buddy cop relationship that he has with Varys. Yeah. And like it's kind of schemers sitting... in a pod. Yeah, two schemers. But again, it's like he he's like the good schemer. Of course, the little finger is like the bad kind yeah, of schemer. Yeah, you got the good you got a yin and a yang, and this is kind of there like a really cool relationship that they have on the show, and it's a cool relationship in the books, and we're setting the table too for Things that are going to happen where, like, you know, Tyrion's kind of cleaning house a little bit. Right. Once again, it's reiterated that he's not a big fan of Joffrey, yet he has to oh, serve I mean, Joffrey. Yeah. Like, Cersei, too. He even says, like, I mean, so Cersei did it, but I, 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 I can't touch Cersei. Yeah. Like, not even if I wanted to. It's just too hard, at least not yet, because mm -hmm. she has been loyal to her, too. I also really like the descriptions of, uh, of Yano Slint. I thought Martin had fun with that. Like, Drunken just, Yano Slint. Yeah, the drunk stuff was great. <laughs> He was built like a keg and had a similar capacity. He drinks. He, he was not a man for sipping. Yeah, no, slipped. He's just always like, <laughs> oh, I'm lugging it back. I liked uh, the bald spot in the middle of Slint's head was beet red and his cloth of gold cape yeah. had slithered off his shoulders onto the floor. It's like a mess, this guy. Yeah. He's just like so sloppy. Just sloshed and just, yeah. He, he talks about um, him having his jowls quivering when he frowns. Like, everything <laughs> is making this guy seem to be, like, a total, like, just look like a jerk, look oh, awful. God. And it's great. I thought it was really good. I thought it was really vivid stuff and just fun. It was. It's a fun chapter. It was a fun chapter. I mean, Tyrion kind of lowering this guy's false security and then springing a trap on him. He's like, what? Like, food full in his mouth. You can't do this to me. I can't. <laughs> it's a good chapter. It's a really good chapter. It was. The brilliance of Tyrion. It's Tyrion. The brilliance of George R. R. Martin. Yeah. Um, any other points you make or you want to make or anybody else out there want to make about Tyrion 2? No. What's the next chapter? 
The next chapter is... I've been peeking ahead at all. I gotta say, Jen does excitement. say that Varys is a mermaid. He gets some place to place overseas fast. It's a long-standing theory that Varys is a mermaid. We'll Varys get to that mermaid. someday. Yeah, it explains it's the eunuch part of things. Doesn't it? Maybe. <laughs> kind of. Uh, the next chapter is Arya 3. Lots of Arya chapters in this one, or at least they're coming at a, a fast clip. We're still on, like, the first chapter, most of other people, but Arya... We're going ahead with that. There we go. Aria. Three. Give me more Aria. Give me, give me more. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. We will be back next week. Okay, I'm going to read one last question. If someone asked a question, we should answer <laughs> it. Do you think you, this is Jen Casey, do you think you, Ron, will wake up with the head of the Golden Company dead and fleet gone? I think that's season eight. Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm going to say yes. A hard yes to that one. It's a hard yes. I saw what happened. I saw what went down there. He's now waking up to something pretty. We have access. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> and we are going to be back next week, uh, next Wednesday, 4 p.m., with more Game of Thrones news, plus with fire discussion, and more of A Song of Dan and Josh. Thank you for watching, and have a pleasant afternoon.